Starting out as a new product manager, there are a million things to do and to learn. You can't do it all, so it's really important to understand what is the most critical. My name's Izzy. I'm Gabe. And we both work as product managers at a tech company. Today, we're going to talk about four key things to do in your first few months as a new product manager. It's so hard to know how to spend your first few months as a product manager. It's hard in any job, really. Mm -hmm. But in PM, there's that added level of responsibility across a whole range of different things. And in the fact that a lot of the time, as an early stage PM, you're also early stage in your career. Mm -hmm. And it can feel really important to try and figure out how you can get that best start to make a great impression and get going in the right way. Being early stage PMs ourselves, we've spoken to a lot of other early stage career PMs, and we found that there's only four really key things that you need to nail in your first couple of months and we feel like if you do these four things you'll be off to a pretty good start. Before we get started a general tip to set the tone. In your first few months your job is to be a human sponge. It's not to make big product calls or bets or decisions. It's not to get that super clear granular understanding of a user so you can get deep into the hardest parts of the problems. It's just to sponge up everything you possibly can from the people around you. One really great way to do this is to shadow a more senior or tenured PM at your company and see how they do things. So just go to all their meetings, stalk their calendar, ask if you can be invited to things and just watch how they do things, watch how they're making decisions, watch how they're prioritizing things, watch how they're interacting with different stakeholders. And then you'll sort of start to pick up the pieces of the puzzle. The other important thing to remember is as a new PM, you're going to have a really fresh set of eyes and that's a huge advantage. Don't let go of that. Don't forget that. You're inherently going to spot things that people that have been working on this problem and are really in the weeds, they're going to miss. And that's actually a really big advantage to yeah. your team, just inherent in the fact that you have this fresh perspective. So really lean into that in your first couple of months. So with that being said, let's get into the four key things that you should do in your first couple of months as a PM. Thing number one is meet your key stakeholders. So make the time to meet all of the key people that you're going to be working with. Number one, that means your team and also all of the cross-functional roles that you're going to be working with. So that might be engineering managers, designers, it might also be people like marketing um, or customer support. It really depends on your company, but make sure you're meeting those key people. Now it will vary a little bit depending on where you're at. Ask your manager about it, ask them who the most important people for you to meet are and take the time to get to know them. Another one to pay attention to is try and make the time to meet with your skip manager, your manager's manager. Now this can be a little bit difficult, Often they're very, very senior and very busy, but we've had really positive experiences with those people providing a lot of support and guidance and really wisdom. And if you do have the opportunity to meet with them, it's really valuable to do so. A really important part of this is just to start with the human stuff, like you're working with people. So take the time to get to know your teammates and your coworkers as people, ask them about what they like, what they do outside of work. Those relationships are gonna make your time at that company all the more rewarding and enjoyable. And it'll also probably make you more productive from a teamwork perspective as well. You can always schedule a follow-up meeting if you don't have time to actually talk about all the work stuff in the first time you're meeting them. Um, but that human connection is really important, particularly if a lot of your team are remote, which they're increasingly likely to be in this new remote hybrid world. Beyond the personal and going into the work stuff, a few things we've found really interesting and important to ask about is their previous expectations and experiences with PMs mm. and what you can do to best facilitate them in their role, no matter what their role is, what's worked well in the past, what hasn't worked so well in the past. You get a lot of different answers and it will give you a really good baseline for what the people you're working with actually need mm. from you and how they, you know, what they'll consider to be successful for you. The second super important thing to do in your first couple of months as a PM is get to know your customers. As product managers, this is one of the most important things that we can do. You cannot build a great product without knowing who your customers are. So what are some ways that you can do this? The first thing you can do is study up or read any existing research that's already been done. The chances are, unless you're joining a very early stage company that doesn't know who their target user is, the company is going to have some idea of who their users are, who their target audience is, um, and have some kind of research done around customer personas already. So ideally this is documented somewhere for you to read or even better, they might have recordings of customer interviews that you can actually watch to study up. You can also attend any customer interviews that other people in your team, maybe your designer or your manager or other product managers have already set up. Just go along and hear how those people engage with your customers and you'll learn a lot in a very, very short space of time. Better yet, set up your own ones. Once you understand how people in your company tend to set up customer interviews, Go ahead and, and, and do your own. You'll, you'll learn an unbelievable amount just having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. 
Another really key thing here is to lean on the people around you. Often your designer or other PMs in the company, including your manager, will have a really, really great and thorough understanding of your user. So pick their brains, schedule some time to meet with them and just talk all things customer. A great way to have an impact really, really early on is to take some of these learnings and take them to the team and help your team understand your user. This is something that we as product managers have way more opportunity to do, getting close to the user than say a team of engineers will. And you'll find your engineer's decision-making will get better and better and better the closer they are to that customer and the more they understand about it. Framing it in terms of helping your team can be really useful for you as well. Something like knowing your user can feel really ambiguous and that's you know an unlimited task. The research there is never done. So if you have in your mind, oh, I'm going to be sharing this back with my team, that can really help you focus your efforts in those first few months. Thing number three to do is to know your product. This is a super obvious sounding one, but it's so important. You can't make great product decisions if you don't understand what it is that your product does. The most likely case is that you'll already be somewhat familiar with the product going in. You might even have used it in previous roles or in your personal life. Whatever the case is, now is the time to start being an expert in your product and what it does. Four key things to understand. Number one, what problem is your product trying to solve? Number two is who is it trying to solve that problem for? Number three is when and how do users use your product to solve that problem? And number four is how does your product differ to alternatives that are also trying to solve the same problem? Something that we've both done when we've started in new product roles and something that we found really helpful is essentially to do this as like a secret shopper exercise. So basically adopting the mindset of a new user and going through the entire product flow, all of the key user journeys, and at each stage documenting really clearly what we're thinking, feeling, whether we're confused, what we like, what we don't like, what's working well, what could be improved. This is another one of those ways to have an impact early on. It can serve as a really useful artifact to actually share back with your team and get them closer to the customer experience. Now, chances are you're not going to be the exact persona of the archetypal user. Your users may have different needs and different contexts to you. So the important thing is to understand how your users are also going to be using the product. So you can do this in a few of the ways that we mentioned before, customer interviews, reading research, but another really good way is actually to harness social media and just do a search for your product name on Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, just see what people are saying about it. You'd be surprised how much you can learn with a good social media search. Your customers might also be leaving feedback through in product feedback mechanisms or customer surveys. So make sure you're getting amongst those and reading all of that as well. This is a great way to start to understand your product, understand your users, how your users use your product, what they might like about it, what they might not like about it. And it will form the absolute basis for how you make product decisions moving forward. All right, key thing number four is to know your goals and how they ladder up to the company's strategy. Now you're in a position where you know your product, you know your users, you've met your team. So now is a great time to start building up your strategic understanding. So basically what you want to understand here is what success looks like for your product and what path you need to take to get to that success. This plus knowing your user will be the basis of how you make decisions moving forward. You want to understand your product's vision. That is, what problem is it trying to solve in the next five or 10 years? Or put simply, what is the world that your product is trying to create or the change that you're trying to create in the world? You'll also need to understand its strategy. That is the path to get to that vision, what the key choices that you'll need to make in order to reach that vision are, and what key metrics there are that will measure your success in reaching that vision. It also includes how your product will compete with other products and the leverage that you will be able to use to win. In other words, what makes your product and your company special in some way? Chances are you'll be working on a specific feature or subset of a broader product, in which case you want to make sure you understand how your team's goals drives the larger product's goals, drives the parent's organization goals, drives the parent's, parents organization's goals, all the way up to the broader company strategic goals. You basically want to understand how the choices that you make in your team can push the company forward to where it's trying to go. If you work for a single product company, your product strategy might be the same as your company strategy. Otherwise, it might just be a subcomponent of it. Now, as an early stage PM, you'll most likely be in a situation where your vision and your strategy have been defined for you. Your job in that case is to figure out how do you meet the key goals that will tell you you're on the right path and you're executing your strategy effectively. If you are in a situation where you do need to start defining some pieces of strategy, that's great. It's an opportunity to learn. Um, we'll leave some great resources in the description 
tools like OKRs can be a really helpful uh, framework that you can use to think about these things. We'd also highly recommend pairing up with a much more experienced product manager. You'll find your learning cycles here will be dramatically increased because you're going to be doing something that's big and difficult and there's a lot of learning opportunity, but you want as much guidance as you can get whilst you're doing that. All right, so those were the four key things to do in your first few months as a new product manager. We think if you do those four things, you'll be off to a great start. We have two parting pieces of advice for you. Piece number one is align these expectations with your manager. Say to them, hey, these are the four things that I want to focus on over the next few months. Make sure that they're on the same page about it. They'll probably have a few twists to this that are company specific and context specific. So that would be really, really valuable to make sure you're fitting these things to the exact context that you're working in. The second thing is very important, and that is to expect to feel like you are drinking from a fire hose. Expect to feel overwhelmed, expect to feel like you have no idea what's going on. From the conversations that we've had and the experiences that we've had, that is extremely normal. That happens every time you step up to something new, and it's a really good sign that you're actually learning and growing and getting better. So we'll leave you with a big congratulations if you are just getting started in the product management world and a big good luck if it's something that you're looking to do. You will find there'll be a ton of things coming at you, but we're very confident that if you focus on these four things, you will be off to the best possible start. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Leave any comments if you have any additional tips and we will see you in the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe. Bye. Bye.